you want to crush, dissolve and flush kidney stone, this is where you are supposed to be. And this is also a place to be. I'm one of a victory, your kidney health coach, your coach in kidney health class. So today we'll be talking about how to crush, dissolve and flush out kidney stones. So we'll be beginning the ride here. If you are interested in being pain free, so let the ride begin. So we we'll have modules from one to eight where we are going to be learning and I'll be uploading all of them in this one beautiful compilation where you will enjoy bit by bit on how to do this. And if you follow the instructions I'll be giving in this video from the beginning to the end, in the space of weeks, you should be able to say goodbye to kidney stones. A lot of people have used this method and it worked perfectly for them. So I am also double sure that you utilizing this same process would have fantastic results. Okay, so um, distance is not a barrier, no matter where you are, Lagos, Abuja, or even outside Nigeria, you can also benefit from this two-step strategy that I've been using to help people to become free from kidney stones. So if you have anyone who has this condition, you can actually invite them to come and join us in this ride. It promises to be very, very educating, very, very rewarding, and also very, very curative, and you know, for kidney stones and many other ailments that you might just learn something new about them today. All right, once again, I'm one of a victory, a kidney health coach. Happy listening, happy watching. Everyone is actually created with kidney. Everyone is born with kidney. This kidney plays a very important role in our body. One of the role, role that kidney plays is to remove waste products from our body. The kidney also plays a whole a major role in regulating the amount of fluid in our body. The kidney also plays an important role in controlling blood level and also in controlling blood pressure. The kidney is located in the abdominal um, region of the body. Okay, we have two kidneys, one on either side of the abdomen, and it is easily felt from the back than, to the, than the front. That is why mainly when you have kidney issues like kidney stone or you're having kidney infection, you feel the pain more from the back because kidney is usually more accessible from what from the back okay having said this normally everybody is born with two kidneys but we have a rare occasions where some people are born with just one kidney and we even have occasions where some people are born without any kidneys at all okay so those born with one kidney can actually live a normal life they can live as long as god wants them to live if they obey the rules Okay, some even can live without knowing that they have one kidney unless something happens and they begin to go to hospitals. Okay, our kidneys are very important and very dear to us that if you don't take care of your kidney, your health may be in jeopardy. One thing you must know about kidney stone is that kidney stone doesn't just occur. Okay, it occurs because there's a process in the body that favors it. So, but before we talk about that, what is actually a kidney stone? Kidney stone is actually the solidification of minerals and waste products in the kidney. It is the solidification of minerals, salts, and waste products in the kidneys. Okay, so when there is this solidification, that is what, when kidney stone does what, does what occurs. So it solidifies to the extent where it forms a hard mass. You know, the hardness of a stone, that is where it got its name from, the kidney stones. Okay, so one thing that you also must know is that when kidney stone starts forming, it doesn't give a sign and a symptom that, oh, look at, I'm about to happen here. Okay, the person who has kidney stone just wakes up one morning and discovers that the stones would have actually done what fully formed in the system. Okay, so formation, you won't have any sign. When the kidney stone is now formed, that is why you, when you will now start having signs. So obviously, the reason why you came in for this um, 
training or for this teaching this period is because you've noticed this pain and you're looking for what a, a solution to it then another very important fact that we must know before we continue with what we are discussing here is that we have different types of kidney stones okay so having in mind that um, kidney stone is a solidification of mass solidification of minerals salt and waste products it is also very important we know that we have four distinct types of kidney stone we have the calcium stone we have the uric acid stone we have the struvite stone and we have the cysteine stone okay in the sub in the next um, modules we'll be talking about these different types of um, and, and stones and how to know that this is the one you are having and how you can handle it how you can prevent it and how you can do with it okay i want you to stay with us while we go through this phase thank you the stone struvite stone and cystine stone calcium stone is the most common type of stone and it occurs when someone has a lot of calcium in their system and they take little amount of water so mark what i said it is one of the most common type of stones then we have the uric acid stone uric uric acid stone um, forms from waste products from certain type of food that we eat especially proteins okay you know when proteins are broken down you know they give rise to what we call uric acid and this uric acid when there is not enough fluid in the body to flush them out of the system they begin to do what accumulate and when they accumulate and solidifies that is what we call um, the uric acid stone so example of protein proteinous food that we eat can, that can actually give off uric acid that is capable of causing um, the uric acid stone is liver and also beef in order to end the conversation about uric acid, I also want you to know that uric acid stone runs in what? In families. Then we have the struvite stones. The struvite stone, in fact, two out of every 10 patients who has um, kidney stone, two out of every 10 patients that has kidney stone, two of them is actually a struvite stone. It is very, it's very common with people who have recurring infection, especially when you have urinary tract infection. So it is more it is more likely that what you're having right now could be what a uric acid stone. The uric acid stones grows very very fast. It grows very fast, faster than any other type of stone. Okay. Then the last but not the least, we have the cysteine stone. In fact, this cysteine stone is caused by a disorder um, called this thing, this cystinuria. So in this cystinuria, there is accumulation or leakage of cysteine into the urine. So too much of this cysteine in the urine um, causes um, kidney stones. Okay. So the release of this cystine into the um, um, into the um, cyst body into the urine causes you um, cystine stone. So this actually this cystine stone is actually the largest type of stone that you can anybody can actually have. And one thing about cystine stone is that it is hereditary. Hereditary in the sense that it runs in family, just like the um, uric acid stone that we discussed about before. I don't know if you're following me. It is very actually very very important that you're following this lecture, that you're knowing the different types of stones, and that you follow this lecture to the end, so that when you are going for consultation, when you are treating this. Um, this and you understand what every step we are taking along the treatment path involves and you also be taking informed decisions about your health so if you have any question please you can put it in the comment section or you can send it to me directly on whatsapp thank you so much if you are having kidney stone these are the likely signs and symptoms you're going to feel one of the primary things that you're going to notice if you have kidney stone is this lower back pain. Very, very sharp, like a stab, like someone stabbed you with a knife. You feel that stab pain.
and most of when it comes, it holds. Like someone stabs a knife into your body and holds it. In fact, um, women who have undergone labor have actually said that this pain associated with kidney stone is actually equivalent to the pain that they pass through when they are passing through labor. Another type of pain that you will notice is a um, stomach pain, or let's call it abdominal pain. You know, sometimes you mistake it for is this ulcer pain that is worrying me, or is this kidney stone pain that is worrying me. You may not really be able to differentiate which is which unless you get um, a consultation from someone who is knowledgeable about the condition that is worrying you. If not, you'll be treating ulcer, you'll be treating other ailments, not knowing that what is actually wrong with you is kidney stones. Kidney stones can also come with the feeling of vomiting and finally throwing up. It can, you can be throwing up and you think that this is, is malaria or because you are, you are having, um, you are pregnant. Or it can come like it's any other sickness and you'll be treating other things not knowing that what you are actually battling with is actually kidney stones. Kidney stones can also come with dizziness. You know, you feel very dizzy, you feel like a sudden blackout. This may be associated with pain caused by kidney stones. We also have cases of fever, high temperature, especially when this kidney stone has become infected. The truth is that the like the more the kidney stones, the duration, like the longer the stay of kidney stones in your kidney, the more other health conditions in medicine they call it comorbidity. Someone who is having kidney stone now can also develop fever. This may be the um, fever from um, kidney infection because kidney infection can set in. Just remember what I said um, before now that kidney stone when it's coming when not treated properly or not treated on time, other conditions can actually develop. One of the conditions that can actually develop is kidney infection, and one of the primary signs of kidney infection is that there will be increase. The back pain that the person is having already will increase and the fever will also be what be there. So another very important marker is blood in the urine. Someone who has kidney stone, most of them usually come down with blood in their urine. So these are the um, primary symptoms. You, okay, someone with this will also have difficulty in passing urine also. This difficulty in passing urine may occur because um, this kidney stone would have moved and is now obstructing the urinary pathway. If you look at the picture showing on the screen, you will see stones scattered in patches. So this bigger stone, when it moves, it can get to a place where it will now block the block um, the movement of um, um, the urine. And when that happens, it's so that urine won't be flowing freely. Sometimes this person goes to urinate and you'll be seeing scattered urine. The urine won't flow out normally. Sometimes it will become scattered. Sometimes it becomes scanty. This person, then, if this stone now moves and gets to the bladder too, it also causes problem. Sometimes you just pass, um, you feel very, very pressed. By the time you now go to pass urine, you pass small and you think that is gone. You think that's all. Well, small, small. After a little time also, this person will now feel another urge to go and pass urine. The person will now go again. This person will now be going to pass urine often and on with, because of there's the presence of a mass that is actually occupying the position that this urine is supposed to do what it's supposed to stay. So, I'll be ending this um, particular um, module here. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to drop it in the comment section or on my WhatsApp. Or in my WhatsApp, let's talk about it. It is not enough to know the signs and symptoms of kidney stones. It's not enough to know that when you're having lower back pain, you're having difficulty in urinating, or, if, or you're urinating blood, or you're throwing up, or because of your having headache, or you're having fever, you conclude that what you're having is kidney stone. That is not exactly um, how it works, okay? Once you have these signs and symptoms that we've discussed earlier, it's actually a point that, that you're having, that what you may, might be having is actually a kidney stone. So, having that baseline knowledge, it should do what propel you to seek solution to what is actually happening to your system. And when you've noticed that, one of the things that you must do is to have 
a consultation section with someone who is knowledgeable. Okay, what would I say? You have a consultation section with someone who is knowledgeable. This consultation section can also be called interview section. Okay, where you now present yourself to the hospital or to this person who has knowledge in helping people or in managing kidney stones. So this person asks you um, questions. What are you feeling? How is this happening? How is this happening? From your explanation of what you um, is wrong with you, this person can actually say for real, look at um, your suspicion about kidney stone is correct or that your suspicion about kidney stone is not what correct. So after interview stage, the next thing that goes <clears throat> that will happen is that this person will now ask you to go for what, what we call a scan. It could be an ultrasound scan or a CT scan. But primarily, what you'll be asked to do is to go for what? An abdominal scan. So this abdominal scan now will now, would now reveal if there is a presence of stone or not. It will also reveal the size of the stone. It will also reveal um, the location of the stone. It will also reveal the number of the stones because some people can have multiple stones at the same time. Then if, if the pain is not, if it's not kidney stone that is causing the, the issue, this scan will also be able to dictate other abnormalities around the kidneys that is actually causing this problem, especially structural abnormality or the presence of a tumor or a blockade. You know, so um, I actually wrote about so many um, investigations that you can actually do if you're having kidney stone, okay? So in, in this um, very presentation, I'm just going to look at three. And I've talked about the interview or the consultation stage. I've talked about the scan. So another third one and also important thing is the urine culture to know if there's a presence of infection. Because if there's a presence of infection, that means you have to treat either together or you are going to do what? Treat separately. Like I said before, kidney stones, when it occurs, it brings the, the sister or the brother known as what? Um, kidney infection. And sometimes kidney infection can also result to what? To kidney stone. In fact, there is this particular drug I usually give um, them, them, that actually takes care of both kidney infection and also kidney stones. Okay, if you actually need this, I will, um, you can send a direct message to me on WhatsApp so um, we discuss about it and how I can get it across to you. Okay, you can also send it to my email or just drop it on the comment section. So, like I said, we are going to be discussing just these three here. Then the rest of it will be, yeah, you can get it from my ebook, Crushing Kidney Stones. The ebook is showing on your screen right now, Crushing Kidney Stone ebook. So, from in this ebook, you will, you will see different kind of investigations that you can do to take care of. Um, that is going to actually point out to you that what you are having is actually what kidney stones because you don't just start treatment without being sure of what you're having is kidney stone you don't start treatment based on what assumption if you have if you have actually gone through all that we've been discussing okay and you have kidney stone no matter the size that this kidney stone is be it 1 mm or 20 mm no matter the size of the kidney stones you need to do what you need to treat them okay because kidney stones, when you don't treat them, they grow larger. And when they grow larger, the more large, the larger the kidney stone, the more, um, and the more risky um, it is to have in your system. Because it can get very large that it will not damage the kidney and lead to re um, um, renal damage, renal issues. If that person has start having serious um, other serious kidney challenges. So no matter the size of the stone you are having, make sure you do what you treat them. And you treat them, you treat them very, very well. Like um, some people will tell you that you should drink water. Okay, in the part of the remedy, um, remedy I give, taking water is part of it. In fact, I encourage if you're having kidney stones that you drink at least 5 liters of water every day. This is part of the treatment so that the force of your urine will be increased. You can actually flush out um kidney stones or infections or any of those things blocking your urinary along your urinary tract okay then if you're actually treating kidney stones and you've gone for um scan and it, you are told that your um, stone 
is actually um, 10 mm or above, I want you to know that um, there will be no need trying any of this um, other method that we'll be discussing here. You will need to go for what? For surgery. And um, there's this there special procedures that we have these days that doesn't need your body to be opened. You're not going to be cut open. Just um, we have the one we call later latrocipsy, where something will pass through your system, no cut from your urethra into your kidneys, and the stone will be removed. Then we have the one we call minimal inversion. Okay, um, the laparoscopy. With with um, laparoscopy, you're not ent you you just get, going to get a minimal cut on your skin. That even after the procedure, you can go um, two to three days in the hospital. You can go; it will be sutured back and it heals completely. So it only when you have very very large stones that cannot be removed through this means, that is when you now have to do the one they call open surgery, the one that everybody is scared of. <laughs> I know you're not scared of it. So we have water therapy, like I said, five liters of at least every every day. Then if um, you're going to be using this other method that doesn't involve surgery, you can go for flow mass. Flow mass is one of the drugs that you can use to treat kidney stones. In fact, in this very um, teaching, I'll be talking about only flow mass. We have um, other medications that we use in treating kidney stones. We have at least about four to five of them. But because of our time, I'll be talking about only flow mass. If you need more details about other drugs that you can actually use in the treatment of kidney stone, you can get my ebook, Crushing Kidney Stones, or you come in for um, consultation where I will draw out a master plan. Where I will draw out a treatment plan that will actually work for you, specifically for you for uh, managing um, kidney stones. So from what flow mass does is that it dilates. Um, the internal organ, it dilates the urethra, the kidneys, and all the rest of all those things. So once they are dilated, once they are free, this um, stone can actually move out of um, the system. But if this is very large, it can get stuck somewhere. That is why you don't need to go ahead and treat yourself. You need an expert to do what to advise you accordingly. Then we'll talk about the last but not the least diet. Okay, when you're treating. Kidney stone, paying attention to diet is actually very important. And, and one of the foods that you should avoid is not red meat and salt. As a matter of urgency, if you have, if you love nuts, you like red meat and it consumes salt a lot, during the treatment of kidney stone, you have to do what? Put a stop to that. I said the last but not the least, but I want to add something very important. You can't be treating kidney stones and you don't do exercise. Exercise is actually very, very important. In fact, the importance of exercise cannot be overemphasized. Okay, so we have the type of the specific types of exercise that can actually help with kidney stones. So you get that in my book also. Different type of exercise that you can do. I have written that out in my book also, the kidney health guide and um, crushing kidney stones. Okay, you, you go through that book, you discover some exercise that you can actually do that will also help the kid, the stones to be moving as you're taking drugs. And I, I must say this, that you don't just treat kidney stone with one of this regimen. It has to do with a combination of therapy. That is how you are sure that you have kicked that kidney stone out of your what system. If you have kidney stones, you need to treat it. Because leaving it in your body means endangering your kidneys and also endangering your life. Like we said in dieting, it is actually very, very important. Okay, if you have kidney stones and you are a lover of nuts, granuts, or the nuts, nuts, you know them, it is better you start doing what? Dropping them gradually or dropping them drastically. Okay, if you are a lover of red meat, like we've discussed earlier, you also have to put a stop you have to reduce the amount you consume per time because some of us that they can't go without uh, without um, meat and you know that this meat you're taking the end product is what after digestion and everything it boils down to uric acid and uric acid has been known to be one of the stones that is available in the human systems that can you know one of the kidney stones that is available then also you need to cut down on salt intake these are the things that you have to do. 
while you are treating kidney stones. But some of us will say, okay, um, I'm, I'm taking pain relief. You take pain relief and it goes for some time, but the kidney stone is there. See, kidney st- um, taking pain relief is not a cure for kidney stones. Taking pain, pain relief is just like buying a little time. And by the time you're buying that time, the kidney gets what? The kidney stone gets in life. There's an adage in Igbo that says that if a bad thing stays for a year, or for, let's say stay for a long time, it becomes a norm. So if kidney stone stays in your body for a very long time, it starts it becomes a norm, it starts growing, okay, it, it takes that place as its home and it will start growing and expanding. So a stone that is one mm today in the next few months may not really be worth nine mm. Like I have said in this teaching over and over again. That stone, kidney stone can actually lead to kidney infections. So if you keep if you allow kidney stones in your system without treatment, your kidneys have higher chances of getting what infected. You'll be wondering where is this infection coming from. So I want to point that out for you. And when kidney stone become um, when the kidneys become infected, it is called kidney infection. Or pyelonephritis, and with this, um, hydronephrosis also may come in, which means um, water in the kidney. Okay, so this all these things, um, kidney stone, hydronephrosis, kidney infection, all gathered in one person, the pain is going to be very, very excruciating. All of them joined together can reduce the functions of your kidneys. Okay. So, and when um, the function of your kidneys have been reduced, what next comes in? What happens is that the function of your kidney will begin to fall. And the target of these um, things I have called kidney infection, kidney stones, hydronephrosis, is to destroy the cells of the kidneys. And the cells of the kidneys, when destroyed, cannot, mark my words, cannot be resurrected. The kidney cells does not replicate itself, meaning that if it is dead, it is dead. That is why when people who have kidney failure, they are, they, they are no drug can actually reverse kidney failure. They ask them to go for what? Kidney transplant. That is a replacement for the kidney that has gone bad. So, kidney stone, kidney infection, hydronephrosis can hit your kidney so hard and cause the cells to pack. And when the cells start packing, that means the function of the kidney will be reducing and it will get to a point it will be declared as kidney um, chronic kidney disease and um, chronic kidney disease has stage one to five so kidney failure or oh, sorry kidney chronic kidney disease is progressive so it can actually progress from one two three four five and the truth is that most of us won't most people won't know that their kidneys are failing until about 90 percent of the kidney has been destroyed so you may be taking pain relief to avert um, the pain associated with kidney stone without knowing that your kidneys have been damaged gradually. One thing that you should do is one thing that you should know rather is that kidney f- um, kidney stone can lead to kidney failure, and you have to do something very fast. Kidney failure management of kidney failure. It's very very expensive. A session of dialysis, as I'm t- making this voice note now, is about fifty thousand naira. And someone who has kidney stones, we need to do have a three times dialysis in a week in order to live a fairly normal life. This is not a cure. This is just to buy time while you wait for a transplant or something that the person will continue doing. So three times a week, that's more than fifty thousand naira. And this person will do it for a month. This person will do it for a year, and this person will do it for a lifetime if the person does not get what kidney transplant. So, how much are you earning? How much is your salary? How much, you know, to be able to keep up with this kind of life where you be spending one hundred and fifty thousand a week in one month? Most of 
or most of most Nigerians won't be able to afford this, and most Africans who are paying direct from their pockets won't be able to afford this, and most insurance companies that even have treating this for you, they won't be happy. They won't tell you, but um, it's not going to be an it's going to be a financial burden on them. But because of the sign an agreement with you, they will go ahead and be doing it. So kidney failure is actually very very what expensive. Then transplant to, in Nigeria, yeah, it costs about fifteen million naira to get a kidney transplant. So by the time you check this, you also take drugs. You also take drugs for what? To keep up um to keep up this new kidney that you have. You call it um immune um suppressant drugs in order to keep the immune low so that this new kidney can actually stay. So you discover that prevention um, um prevention is actually better than cure. So if you have kidney stones right now it is better you remove it no matter what it would cost. Okay? No matter what it's going to cost, you can actually remove that kidney stone from your body. So I have a consultation section where you can choose where we we can talk to know the one that actually works that will work best for you. We will know if taking drugs will be the best for you, whether exercise will be doing will be the best for you, drinking water, whether it will be surgery, which one that will be better for you. So you know we have different surgeries. We have the minimum we have the one that you kind of procedure surgery you will do. They will not even cut you, they will just remove the stone. It is called laser retritripsy. Then we have the one they will not give you small cuts. That one is called laparoscopy. Then we have the one you get a very you get a not a very big cut. You get a cut on your body, and that one is open surgery. So these are different ways of doing what of removing kidney stones, and they are all available in Nigeria. And the truth about it is that the first two I mentioned, laser retrieval and laparoscopy, within four days you are out of the hospital, and um, the one of open surgery at least at most some people don't even they don't even stay up to two weeks seven days. They Seven days, everyone is good to go. Okay, so you, you, you may need to come in for this um, consultation. And the consultation is actually free. Just that we need to keep up being in business. And you also need a vital knowledge that you're going to get that's going to help you. So we are making it compulsory that everyone must get um, the Caution Kidney ebook before coming in for the consultation. Yes, you need to get the ebook before coming in for the consultation because the ebook is also going to make our work of my work um, in consultation also very easier. You understand what's going on with you. Then it's going to also um, <clears throat> help you to ask the right questions. It's also going to help you to um, understand the pathway of any of the treatment plan you're going to use because it's not everything we'll be talking in the consultation 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 we're just we're looking at expressly on how to come up with a treatment plan that will work for you but this one is going to help explain everything to you we have a treatment plan that we give for kidney stones okay but we follow procedures the first procedure is to make sure that you get the ebook Okay, when you get the ebook, we have some things, so many informations that you need in that book. Okay, so this book guarantees you that you have a consultation time with us. It is through that consultation that we use a two-step strategy that we've been using over the years to help people get eradicate to eradicate kidney stone. That is when we'll be giving it out to you. The reason why we are not giving it out to you with that consultation is because. We may need to adjust one or two things in the treatment plan and also we need to know your medical history very well to know if you actually need what we have or you need something else so we'll know how to advise you accordingly so you get the ebook you come in for the consultation and you get the treatment plan after which we do a follow-up please this is going to be for a limited time I'm gonna yeah, it may be tomorrow it may be next tomorrow so I want you to utilize this opportunity you have now to get the consultation because I won't always be here to I'm a very busy person I won't always be here to do consultation but from now to the next 24 hours I'll be here doing consultation another thing another thing I want you to know that we'll be doing a follow-up from here now follow-up to your management um, from 
when the you start your treatment till the final day you present your results to me and tell me it's over we'll be talking i'll be getting it done so that is why you have to reach me on whatsapp so we can actually be because i'm always on whatsapp you drop your messages i'll answer you if you don't see me immediately you can give me a call or a flash tell me you drop a message i'll come there to attend to you but the prerequisite to having this is just to get your this thing to get the ebook and we'll begin the process a lot of people have given a testimony about how god used our treatment plan to get it done so i believe your testimony is next on the line thank you so we'll be sharing uh if you're interested in getting the ebook you can use the link i'll be dropping in this um, comment um, in the description section that will direct you to seller seller is an online platform where you can buy books so after buying the ebook from there you send me the receipt then i will proceed from there or or you can send me a message on whatsapp requesting for my account details where i will send you the account details and you pay direct show me the proof of um, payment once it's been confirmed we start the we'll send the ebook to you and you have the consultation so it's as simple as that just like i said just believe just the way others have actually testified yours is going to be the next in line so this message was brought to you by honorable victory your kidney health coach with over five years of working experience helping people to overcome um, kidney stones and i strongly believe that having listened to this video you've learned something please you can also share and invite your friends to like and subscribe to the channel subscribe to our channel and share thank you